Hello and welcome to another exciting Max MSP tutorial. I'm Andrew Robinson and lately I've been seeing a lot of meme videos where it's like this entire movie or this entire episode of a TV show but only clips above a certain audio threshold. And I thought those memes were so funny that I wanted to reprogram one myself in Max MSP. Uh, yesterday I uploaded a video where uh, you see the final meme video and in this video I'm going to show a tutorial of how I made that in Max MSP. So if you're on board with that, let's just jump right into it, shall we? Okay, so the very first thing always we always need to do is create the jit.world object and always always I say at fully one, at FSA one, at FS menu bar zero. These are good starting parameters that I like to have in my jit.world at all times. And then we're just going to patch a toggle into the inlet, lock our patch, click it, turn it on, and we see now the window is rendering. So we'll be able to see what we're doing with the video. Um, the next step is to create the jit.movie object. And we're going to use this one that has a tilde at the end of it. Um, because we need to use the audio from the video. It was very different in Max 7. You had to use a separate object to pull audio from the movie object. Now there's just jit.movie tilde, which gives us outlets for audio. So that's very, very uh, useful and way easier. Um, and then we're going to give it the at unique one setting so it does not output duplicate frames. We're going to say output texture one. Um, so we get a better frame rate playback and we're going to say at loop zero because we only want our video to play through once. And now that we have those objects, we're going to give them some messages. We're going to give it the message read so we can load in a movie file. We're going to say start so we can start the movie. We're going to say stop so we can stop the movie. And we are going to say get state which will be very important for knowing where those frames are that it's above the audio threshold. Um, so these are our starting spots right here. And uh, you can see here, this is our um, MSP audio outlet for left channel and this is the right channel. So we're going to make a peak amp object that I'm going to set to 30 milliseconds. And we're going to take our audio from whatever our movie file is patch it into our peak amp object and patch that into a float number box. Um, the video I used was the very first episode of Fairly Odd Parents. They yell a lot in that show, <laughs> so I figured it would be a really good one. And as soon as we load that in here and we create a jit.geo video plane with the parameter at transform reset two to see what we are doing, we can patch that in to our jit.gl video plane and we can see the episode start to play here. Now nothing's working with our peak amp object yet because I have the audio off. So I'm just gonna turn that on. And now once we do that, we see uh, there are values coming through. The video froze for some reason. So we're just gonna reread it in there. I didn't even have to do that. You saw that it picked back up as I clicked the button. Now everything's working fine and we're getting a value for our amplitude. If we want to hear what's going on, we can attach the audio output to an easy dash. But we can see clearly there is an amplitude value. There is audio for this video coming through. So I'm going to press stop real quick. And um, now we just need to set the threshold for our audio signal. Um, I, for the video, did 0.5 because that's, it will pass that threshold. This value, um, since we're pulling it directly from the movie file, is normalized. So it's going to be between zero and one. And 0.5 is half of that. So that will pick up a lot of the screaming and things. And then I'm just going to attach it to a cell one object so we get a bang from it when it is above that value. And then I'm gonna throw in a speed limb object in here set to 30 milliseconds just to do some basic smoothing. And we'll see that uh, when this passes this threshold, we're gonna get a bang. So it's those are all the frames where the volume is above that threshold. And once we do that, once we start getting our bangs, we need to do something to collect 
those frames where it has passed the threshold. We're going, the way this is going to work is we're going to analyze the entire video, find all the frames where it's above the threshold, and then we're going to go back and have it play the video, but just from jumping from frame to frame. So we need to get the frames where it's above the value and we need to store those frames in uh, an object that does that for us. I'm going to use the coal object, that's C-O-L-L, to store these values. And we are going to use the object join to join these values together. And I'm going to say at triggers one, um, so that this object, this inlet, is our hot active inlet, and the first one is actually the cold inlet. So we're not gonna get any output when this one is updated, but we will when this one is updated, and I'll explain exactly why we're doing it that way in just a sec. But I'm gonna patch the join object into our coal object, and we are going to create a counter object, and we're gonna patch that into here. So the counter object is going to receive a bang, and it's going to insert into the coal object different lines at those values of what those frames are. Um, we just need to tell it the counter to count up by one at each frame and to output that frame. So to do that, we're going to use a trigger object and we're gonna say DB so we get two consecutive bangs and we're gonna patch our audio threshold bang into the trigger object and we're gonna patch the first bang out into the counter so that it counts up first and updates that value in this join object. And then we're going to send our second bang to the get state message. Um, and then if we use a route object and we route the position out of our jit.movie object, we will see that we will get the normalized position value ever of where those frames are every time this is above 0.5 and you see it's already working because we're starting to get those outputs right away. Okay, cool. So this is gonna be great. I'm gonna delete the counter object to reset it just cause. Um, and all we have to do next is patch our position object into our join object, just like that. Um, and then we'll see these same values show up out of the output of the coal object eventually. So, 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 so at this point, uh, what needs to be done is we just, we need to restart the video from the beginning and we need to let it play all the way through so that it records all of those frames where the value is above what we are talking about. Um, and I am going to jump ahead uh, in this video to that moment where we've already analyzed the entire video because I don't want to just sit here for 20 minutes. <laughs> while that's, I don't want you to sit here for 20 minutes while that's going on. So we're gonna jump to the future right now. All right, and 20 minutes later, we have now analyzed the entire video and we have saved every position where the audio is above that threshold into this coal object. And if you look at it, I have the at embed one attribute turned on now. That's just so if I save and close out, um, all the frames will still be saved within the object. I recommend you do that before you start the analyzation process. And if we double click on the coal object right now, we can see, yes, we have all these lines where all these frames were above the specified audio threshold for that video. Cool, so now, now uh, that we have those frames saved, we just have to do the playback part of this. So we've done the analyzation, just need to do playback. So I'm going to delete this trigger object for now. It's gone, bam. Um, and instead, we are going to create a message uh, with the position, and we're gonna say dollar sign one for our variable, and then we're gonna do comma, bang. And we're going to patch that into our jit.movie object. And if we patch the output of the coal object to the position message, uh, it's going to jump to that position and play at that frame, which is perfect. All we need to do now is step through all of our uh, saved frames. So we're gonna use the message next, and we're going to patch that into the coal object. 
and I'm going to use the uh, bang render output from our jit.world object. I'm going to create a send object called render, patch that in there, and then I'm going to copy that, change this S to an R so it's a receive instead of a send, and I'm going to copy this speed limit, but I'm going to change it from 30 to 10 so that uh, there's just a little bit of a buffer before it jumps to the next clip. This way you'll be able to hear the entire audio that we uh, want. Um, and I'm going to, once I patch that into this next message, our process is going to start. So we can see this working right away. Um, if I lock the patch real quick, uh, reread in the Fairly Odd Parents episode. Um, There you go. You see, it's working. It's jumping from it's jumping from a uh, clip to clip with the frame. There's just a weird audio delay feedback thing going on right now because I'm screen recording, but that shouldn't be happening with you and yours. Uh, you should see this very smoothly go from the correct frame to the correct frame. The only thing that you have to do to do that is have our render bang. Uh, chord patch patched into the next message and you have to click start uh, and have the video start. It actually works if you don't click start, but then we don't hear the audio or just jumping from frame to frame. So if you want the audio to also be playing, you have to click the start message as well. Um, and there you go. Honestly, that's, that's the end of this tutorial in terms of getting the video clip to play at the positions above that specified audio threshold. If you wanted to at this point, I would recommend that you uh, patch in an add or UI object to your jit.world object and you turn that output texture on so it outputs its texture and then you create a jit.gl. Uh, siphon server object and patch the output of your jit.world to your siphon server object so that way when you go and you open up the siphon recorder object uh, application you are able to record the video as it's meant to be uh, and then do and share share it with the world as you please um, and that's it that's it that's this whole video tutorial great stuff I'm glad you uh stuck through that with me and hopefully you learned some things about max msp that you did not previously know maybe you didn't know about the movie tilde object maybe you didn't know about the coal object and how it can store uh, data hopefully something was useful in this tutorial video for you if you have any more questions please feel free to leave that in the comments down below and if you want um please feel free to subscribe and to my channel and like this video uh, if doing that lets me know that I am doing a good job, so I highly appreciate you guys doing that for me. I also have a Patreon that you can subscribe to where you can download all of these tutorial patches to use yourself. Um, they are more annotated than what you're seeing here in this tutorial video, so I highly recommend doing it for that reason. Um, but also, in addition to that, I will release pre- content before it comes out on my YouTube channel. There's uh, a bunch of fun other Max patches that I make that you can download and use uh, to your own heart's content. Um, so I highly recommend also subscribing to my Patreon. Um, not only does it give you guys bonus content, but it does help me create more content for you. Um, and on that note, I'm going to sign off. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial video. Thanks again.